here we turn to Europe, which is, as much as we talk about the problems everywhere else, it's definitely worse in Europe. So uh, when you look at retail sales month on month, uh, in June, they were expected to be up 0.2. They were down negative 0.3. When you look at retail sales year on year, they were expected to be down uh, 1.7%. They were down 1.4%. Investor confidence was slightly better, expected to be down 24.5, came in down 18.9. You know, you're still seeing that pressure there, especially when you look at Germany. So Germany factory orders were better. Uh, And remember, for those that have been following us, we said that, look, look, factory orders or manufacturing was going to bounce. You know, as we said, that 32, I think, is what they printed. Is like, that is a bottom. Like, they are going to get a bounce from that. That is, <laughs> that is a really bad number that unless we're in some sort of massive recession leading to a depression, that will probably be the low. And that's where you're starting to see some of those factory orders come back, which is a positive in, in the sense of, but what, for those that have been following us, what we've been saying is that you were going to get a bounce back up. So you were going to come down manufacturing was going to bounce higher and then services was going to fall further. So you were still going to get that marriage in the middle, but it was with, you know, obviously manufacturing coming up and your factory activity coming up and services coming down, which continues to play out. Industrial production was expected to be down 5.5%. It was down 1.5%. Year on year was expected to be down 2.2%, was down negative 1.7%. So again, you're the production is still weak, but you're still getting orders. <clears throat> and as orders pick up, because this is June, production is going to pick up. And again, why we see a little bit more of that, you know, that better backdrop versus what we've seen. But it, it doesn't mean that we're going to go into expansion and economic growth. It's just it's going to be less bad on the uh, industrial side. CPI continues to go up month on month. It was expected to be up 0.3, it was up 0.3 year on year up uh, 6.2%. So again, you're continuing to see inflation as a driver, which is why the ECB, in our opinion, is going to continue to increase rates. Then when we look at France, uh, wages were down a bit more than expected, expected to be down 1.3%, up 1.3% was only up 1%. Industrial production was expected to be down 0.3, was down 0.9%. Industrial production year on year was supposed to be up 1.7%, was actually down 0.3. Manufacturing production was expected to be down 0.2, was down 1%. So while Germany kind of hit a floor and is bouncing, France still hasn't really found its, its lower level. And that's where we see a bit more pressure coming because France is the second largest economy in Europe. And that's why we don't see a meaningful recovery, but it just shows you how there's going to be more stress, especially when you look at Spain with industrial output was down 1.4%. Uh, deal with everything was, was negative, as you can see in general. So Spain is going to continue to be, it was a little bit better in some areas, but we do see that acceleration to the downside. Now, business demand, this is comparing it to the U.S., demand for bank loans in the corporate sector just fell to their lowest since 2008. There's nearly half as much demand as what we saw in 2020 when the economy was completely locked down. Both the U.S. and Europe have been massive drops in demand for bank loans, uh, which is why, again, we we see more of this slowdown. But Europe is still going to follow pace. You know, the U- European area is, is still even above where we were are in the U.S., and we do see a lot of that continuing as that tightness is going to continue to move through the system. Manufacturing output for PMI uh, quarter uh, industrial production again, it, it's it's going to flatline and bounce a bit, but we're not going to see a meaningful change. You know, then when you look at strong euro and, and weak world economy, put early bird deep in red territory, early bird and, and the contrib- uh, contribution. So early bird is looking at what are some early indications for growth and not surprising, it's negative. And, and that's why we've talked about Europe, you know, the euro in general being in a negative movement just because there's going to be a lot of pressure on economic growth, which is only going to mount. Italy manufacturing output, three-month average advanced. As you can see, everything has reversed lower. Uh, Italy was had some bright spots, but as we said, we, we expect them to continue to move down. Uh, Eurozone retail sales uh, continue to uh, flatline well below trend, but not worsening as much. We do see that accelerating to the downside. Remember, this is June. We do see more of this pressure in July. 
as services, you know, is, is the biggest driver to the downside, continuing to push us lower. And then when you look at core orders still pointing downwards. So the total, when you look at in general, it's, it's still contracting when you look at some of the pieces, but Again, that's why we, we don't see much change, but this is looking at obviously order intakes for German manufacturers. It can only be negative for so long. People still need stuff. People still need things. And if you, you can ignore it for a long time, but at some, at some point you're gonna put in an order and that's where we see some of that bounce. But a majority of industrial companies judge their order backlogs as too small. And that's coming full circle back to what we talked about in segment one where backlogs have been absorbed, have been used. So now you, you have to rely even more on new orders and that is bouncing a bit, but you've lost all of your back orders because you've worked through them. So you're still in a net net recessionary or a contractionary standpoint, just not as bad as you were. But that's why we do see, again, things remaining tight and problematic in Europe. I know this is a bit of a shorter segment just because we've covered Europe a lot. You know, there's not, there hasn't been too much data that's come out. Uh, for those that are in Europe, it's August and there's not a lot happens in August. So in the next segment, we're going to go deeper into China and some of the things that are happening in Asia at the moment.